Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the video. In this one, we'll do a brief overview of the Python request library, how we use it, and why we might want to. Let's dive in. So getting started, what is the Python request library? If you're brand new to Python, a library is just a collection of code that we can install and use in our own projects. The Python request library is one of the most popular libraries downloaded by everyone. What it does is allow us to easily make HTTP requests to different websites. So what does that mean? A request to a website can either get us information or send information so our applications can talk to each other. I know it's very broad when I say just passing information around is what the request library does, so let's take a look at a few projects that you might include the request library in. These are just a few brief examples and there's plenty more. But let's say that we're creating an application that goes to a website and checks that it's up. We'd expect a status code of 200, which means OK, and we can use the Python request library to get that status code. Next, if we simply want the page source or some information on that web page, we can use the Python request library to get that as well. If we wanted to parse it, the request library could work together with an HTML parser to parse that web page together so it's nicely readable. Finally, we can use an HTTP request either through the request library or something else to do things like basic authentication and OAuth. What that means is when you go to a website and you sign in using Google, what's happening in the background is just a request to Google to ask if this person is valid. If they return true, then the application lets you sign in. It's a little bit more complex than that, but essentially all it is is just requests going back and forth between different servers. So now that we've covered the what and the why, let's talk about how we can use the Python request library. Jumping into a text editor, all we need to do is if you're working locally, you can type pip install requests. I'm working in a browser-based text editor. That way I can share it with all of you and you can just go and clone the script without worrying about any of the setup. I already have requests installed. So what I can do in my Python script is just import that library. Once we have it imported, all we'll need to do is to call it so we can use the methods built in to the library. In those use cases, we talked about how we can easily get information from a website. So let's do that first. We'll set some variable and we'll call our library. Then we can use a method called get. What get does is send a get request, which is just a special type of request to whatever URL we specify here. In my case, I will just do something that we all know and go to Google. Once we have that, we can get back a response object, which we're just calling this variable here. So let's go ahead and print that. We'll run this and we should get back a response in our log, which we do. We see we get back a response of 200. And that means that Google is surprisingly still up. This response object has more information that we can pull out of it if we want to. And we can do that by accessing attributes on it. So to access attributes, we use a period, and then we can put in the name of any attribute that we want. There's many, many attributes, but one of the basic ones is content. So let's pull this response object's content and print it to our log. Once we do that, we see we get the content of this web page. As you can see, it's not very readable. And that's why in the project section, I mentioned an HTML parser. This information is what the HTML parser will take in and make it into a nice readable format. There's a lot more information that we can pull using attributes, and I'll be sure to link a resource down below that has all of those. I'm trying to keep this video short and just to the basics, so we've covered how to get basic information using the request library. Now let's talk about how we can get basic information from an API. If you're brand new to APIs, all they are are a defined way that we can talk to different websites or servers and get information from them. So these servers have this information and they expect a certain way for people to ask for it. Let's see how we can do that now. We'll say response. We'll do the same thing that we did above and just send a get request. And now we'll go send a request to this API. I found this API on GitHub and I'll be sure to link that resource for this video down below too. But all it is is just a website that says, if you pass in this path, then we'll generate a password for you. Then we'll return it. So to see that, what we'll want to do is print our response. And then the usual way that we expect to format API request information is to use 
a JSON format. Let's run this. And as you see in our log, we now have a JSON dictionary that has data and then a randomly generated password for us. So we've talked about different ways of getting information from public APIs. But now let's say that we want to access the API of a service in which we need to sign into. Sometimes we can call the API by using a token or we can use basic authentication. Basic authentication will look like this, where we send a request to the URL the same way that we have here, but in their API, they define a set of rules where we need to pass in basic authentication information so we can get those resources. If the service is unable to verify your username and your password in a basic auth, they may just return a bad request response and not give you that information. This way, they can selectively choose who to send information to and not just send it to everyone. So far, we've only talked about how to get information from a website. I don't want to make this video too long, but I want to show you one last cool feature that we can use the request library for. Another request that we can do is to post information or send information to a server. What this means is that we can actually send the information rather than get it. So what we can do is conveniently enough is say post instead of get. We'd pass in the URL here, just like how we have before. And then we can use something called a payload. So our payload would look something like a dictionary that has data. And what we can do is send that data to some server or website by saying data is equal to our dictionary. So we name that payload. And what this will do is send this information to this URL. And hopefully if you're following their API instructions, they'll know what to do with it and return you a response that is dependent on whatever data you sent it. Like I said, I wanted to make this as fast as possible in a brief overview, but if you have any specific questions or would like to see a part two, please let me know and I'll be happy to make it or answer those questions. Until next time.